Welcome back to NatFL everyone. This video analysis strengths versus weaknesses of the best prospect for Miami Dolphins at number 6 pick. Jamar Chase, who 2019 pro football focus charted with 24 deep catches, which they termed as the most we've seen in a college season. Kyle Pitts, averaged 4.91 yards per route against man coverage, third highest of any player in the nation and more than two yards higher than the second-ranked tight end. Matchup. Nightmare. So who is the good choice at number 6? Comment, C, if you believe in Chase, or, P, if you love Pitts. First, Jamar Chase. A dual-threat athlete coming out of Archbishop Rummel High School in Jefferson Parish, Louisiana, Jamar Chase had dozens of scholarship offers due to his success on the gridiron and in track and field. Chase originally decided to attend Mississippi, but changed course due to investigations of the school by the NCAA. He decided to stay close to home and play for LSU, and was part of one of the most prolific offenses in college football history. Chase decided to opt out last season due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Strengths. In a draft that might not offer a ton of options in the ex-receiver mold, Chase's experience facing and beating press coverage stands out. In a game that has become a bit of scouting lore because of the number of future first-round players, the 2019 contest between LSU and Alabama, you'll get a chance to see Chase battle with a press coverage defender who would get drafted in the second round, Alabama's Trevon Diggs. That game, is, that game is a perfect illustration of Chase's upper body strength and physical style of play. He can use both power and footwork to beat the press, and that will truly serve him well at the next level. Chase's play strength translates after the catch as well. PFF charted him with 22 broken tackles after the catch, and that gives him the ability to turn slants and hitches into big plays due to his strength. He also shows no fear working to the inside, over the middle or on routes when he knows the big hit is coming. On an early wheel route against Alabama in 2019 he knows the free safety is coming to deliver a shot, and Chase does not drop his arms or short arm the catch. Some concerns about his route running have been raised, but this is not a concern I share. Can Chase give you a full and complete route tree out of the gate? Perhaps not, but what he has been asked to run he runs extremely well from corner roots, hitches, slants, vertical roots and double moves. In terms of his role and play as an X but you can find moments of him being used all over the field, aligning both in the slot and as a Z that coupled with what he offers in terms of roots makes him a scheme fit in almost any offensive system. Finally, Chase has a great feel for scramble drill situations, and when playing with Joe Burrow back in 2019 anytime the QB vacated the pocket Chase would continue working to get into his field of vision. If there is a strength of his on par with his play strength, it is his effort. If Chase took a snap off during the 2019 season, I did not find weaknesses. While it is easy to find strengths to his game, it is much tougher to find weaknesses. Again, he might not offer a full root tree, but smart teams that focus on what players can do will put him in positions to be successful. There were questions about him from an athletic profile. Although he looked plenty fast and athletic on film to me, but the results of his recent pro day as outlined above probably erased any fear. He might not be the shiftiest receiver in this class, but his strengths in every other aspect of the game make him an impressive prospect. There is also a two-fold set of concerns regarding his prowess with contested catches that I also think is overblown. First, Often contested catch specialists in college struggle to make the transition because they cannot separate from coverage at the next level. I do not think there are any concerns over Chase and separating from coverage. Second, some might worry about if Chase is physical enough to win in those contested catch moments, but watching him play top-flight talent such as Diggs and AJ Terrell should dissuade you from that notion. Comparison. A common comparison for Chase is Anquan Boldin, given how strong both players were off the line and at the catch point. PFF also used the Justin Blackman comparison, which is accurate for where both players were coming out of college. Predict. This is a strong class at the position but what sets Chase apart is his ability to play the X receiver spot at a high level out of the gate. Staring down some of the best man coverage defenders the NCAA had to offer, Chase put together an impressive season back in 2019, when he was just 19 years old. He has true big play ability, 
with the potential to beat you deep with his speed but also his ability to turn slants into touchdowns with his strength and footwork. His versatility and strength make him the top option at this position on the 2021 NFL. Second, Kyle Pitts. Entering the 2020 season Kyle Pitts was considered a player to watch at the tight end position, with other names like Penn State's Pat Fryermuth perhaps more likely to emerge as the top option at the position. Everything changed when Pitts put together a tremendous final season for the Gators. In just eight games he caught 43 passes for 770 yards and 12 touchdowns, with the touchdown receptions a career high mark for him. Beyond the production is what he put on film. The phrase, matchup nightmare, almost became a running gag during Florida telecasts. Over the course of the season, Pitts moved from player to watch at the position to perhaps the first non-quarterback taken in the draft. But the rise, as we will discuss, is real. Strengths. Every single time I sat down to study quarterback Kyle Trask, I ended up taking more notes on Pitts. What makes him such an intriguing talent is the fact that yes, matchup nightmare is exactly what college and can be at the next level. When you think about it, his position in the NFL might be accurately listed as MN. Matchup nightmare than Tay, tight end. And the fact that he is such a nightmare makes him worthy of inclusion with the wide receivers in a tier of his own. Florida used him all over the field, putting him in line in the wing, in the slot and then aligned to the boundary as more of an X receiver. His ability to beat man coverage, as illustrated by the yardage per route, shows up consistently on film. Whether beating cornerbacks on double moves or linebackers on slants or pivot routes. Pitts also has a tremendous catch radius, as evidenced by the above image from the SEC championship game. Put it up near him, and odds are he is going to come down with the catch. What helps him against man coverage, and what you can see on the film, is his lower body technique. Pitts has the footwork of a slot receiver, and when you see a player like him running pivot routes down near the goal line like he is, Julie, he is Julian Edelman, you come away impressed. Pitts truly sinks his hips and lower body into and out of cuts, getting that critical separation from the nearest defender even on quick game concepts. Then there is his schematic diversity. Pitts fits any offensive system, and can run any route out of any alignment. Whether a pure West Coast offense, an Air Coriel downfield system, and anything in between, Pitt. Weaknesses. Three weaknesses often come up when discussing Pitts as a tight end. First is the idea that he is just a tight end and those players do not offer the value that others do on the offensive side of the football. Again, Pitts is more than a Tay. Smart offensive coordinators will find ways to make defenders pay in man coverage situations, through alignment, personnel and scheme. Second is his blocking. Is Pitts someone you will put next to the tackle and run sprint 36 gut behind? Probably not more than a few times a game, if that. But Pitts did improve from 2019 to 2020 as a blocker in both the run game and in pass protection. Furthermore, if you are drafting him and use him as a blocker on more than a handful of snaps per contest, the happiest person in the stadium will be your opposing defensive coordinator. Finally is his size. Pitts does not fit the mold of a prototypical tight end. However, neither does his unofficial 40-yard dash time of 4.4.46. If you really want blocking from your tight end, there are options later in the draft that you can pair with him. If you want someone that can run by a cornerback on first down and then break away from a safety on third down, this is your player. There is a fourth potential weakness with Pitts that arises when contemplating him as a receiver. If an organization simply uses him as an X receiver, there might be cornerbacks in the NFL that can handle him in one-on-one -on -one situations, such as Jalen Ramsey for example. Using him as more of a tight end, matchup player allows the offense to create favorable matchups using personnel, while forcing defenses to determine how they will treat Pitts and respond, whereas simply treating him as a receiver negates that advantage for the offense. Comparison. Darren Waller is a name that comes up often in the Pitts conversation, and I understand that. Deep down I think Pitts is one of those prospects that merits a comparison to himself, a unicorn. He is Kyle Pitt. He is Kyle Pitts, the most dangerous weapon in this offensive class. Predict. Football is a matchup game, and offensive coordinators try as hard as they can to create mismatches and then exploit them. A player like Pitts, with the ability to beat defensive backs and linebackers in man coverage, is ideal to fill that role. 
even teams that have a tight end already on the roster, like the Philadelphia Eagles or the Detroit Lions, would be smart to consider Pitts. You can put him next to a Zach Ertz or a TJ Hawkinson and run a 12 personnel package that forces the defense to decide whether to use a base package or a sub package. Either way the defense is wrong. If they go light, you can run behind the Tay duo. If they go heavy, spread them out, put Pitts on the boundary and watch him run away from safeties or linebackers. It is a win-win for you as an offense. That strength is negated somewhat if Pitts is used as a pure receiver. However, on those instances where Pitts is put out put outside, or even in the slot, he is one of the better offensive weapons in this class. He is perhaps this draft's unicorn, a player without comparison. That puts him in his own tier, even among the receivers, and his talent makes him worthy of inclusion in this group. Plus, in a draft class that might not have a ton of options at the X receiver spot, Pitt's ability to serve in that role will make him an enticing option in addition to what he offers as a tight end. So, what do you think about these Dolphins prospects? Comment below.